few months ago, you might remember that we drove the Porsche 718 Boxster. Call it a big facelift, call it a new model, call it what you will. The important thing about it is that the old, sweet, high-revving six-cylinder engine the Boxster used to have had been replaced by a four-cylinder turbo. And we discovered that the Boxster is still the greatest open-top sports car you can buy, but that the engine is a bit less soulful than it used to be. Well now, as is the fashion of things, this is the Porsche 718 Cayman, the hard-roofed version. And I won't lie to you, exactly the same thing applies. The most of what you need to know is it now has a 345 horsepower, four-cylinder turbocharged engine. That's instead of a 320-ish brake horsepower straight flat six. It does not sound as good, it sounds a bit Subaru-ish, but it is still the greatest hard roof sports car you can buy. Let's have a quick recap of the chassis changes. The steering here is about 10% quicker than it was. That is because it and the front suspension has been developed from the Porsche 911 Turbo. I don't think it's as simple as they just take out the turbo one and they drop it straight in. I'm sure there's more to it than that. Whereas at the rear, the rear suspension has elements, especially the ones that keep the lateral stiffness up, from the outgoing Porsche Cayman GT4, which is just one of the best, giddiest driver's cars of all time. And there are spring and damper changes unique to this car, which just make it exceptionally sweet to drive. It's a tiny bit heavier than the game when it replaced, but the center of gravity is lower. And somehow, in terms of its dynamism and response and agility, it's just all been turned up to an even more perfect mid-engine level than it was. And finally, for the first time, the Cayman is now cheaper than the Boxster, as it should be because the folding tops are expensive to put on. So a tin top like this, well, it's about 4K less than a Boxster to buy. Happy days. The greatest sports car in the world is now cheaper than its soft-topped equivalent. Marvellous. So there is one question left outstanding, really. If you are to accept that this is the greatest mid-engine sports car around, even though it has a four-cylinder engine, how do you create a the perfect Cayman? What is the best example of the best sports car? Well, given I've got beard and jumper, we can afford to get a bit techy about this and consider it bit by bit. First things first, Cayman S or standard Cayman? Standard Cayman has a two litre four cylinder, this is a 2.5. Haven't driven a two litre Cayman yet, my colleagues tell me, and it's true in the Boxster, that the two litre engine is a bit more revvy and responsive. That's all very well, but personally I'd like 350 horsepower, 345 brake. So let's go Cayman S. Manual or PDK? Well, it slightly depends where you live. If you spend a lot of time in town, I guess you would go for a PDK. Personally, I think a manual is nicer. One thing though, if I turn it into sport mode, which gives me angry exhaust, gives me burble on the overrun, and then I go for a downshift, I get that automatic blipping. I mean, it's really nice. It's really good. It blips as well as I would. But the only way to stop it auto blipping is to turn ESC, stability control, completely off. But there are times when I'd quite like to do the blipping myself, but keep ESC on, to be honest. So manual or PDK, I'd go manual. What can you do with the chassis? Well, there is PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management. That means basically adaptive dampers. I think you'd probably tick them. They go soft when you want. They go firmer when you are in cornering. And then you've got a sports mode, which makes them a little bit firmer all round, but still quite usable on a bumpy Welsh road like this. And then what you can spec, and I think you should, is a limited slip differential. It's a mechanical limited slip differential with TVVB, torque vectoring via braking. On the way into a corner, it will just nip up the back brake just on the inside to just help the car turn into a bend. And then on the way out, because it is a mechanical limited slip differential, it won't waste any power as the inside tyre spins up, which means it just exits a corner much more cleanly, much more straightly, much more easy to adjust the line on the way out of a corner. So what else? Well, there is one more thing. This car doesn't have it, but I have driven Caymans and other Porsches that do, which is PCCB, another acronym, Porsche Ceramic, Carbon Ceramic Brakes. They are an expensive option, but they do two things. One, they do not fade on a track. B, their unsprung mass is lighter. Now, that means the suspension has less work to cope with. It usually makes the wheel control that little bit more responsive. It makes the steering lighter actually but just as feelsome just as delicious i'd go for it although it is not cheap and then all of those combined into the perfect cayman which breaks aside this is what does it give you it gives you 
a car that just rides and handles and steers like very, very few others. Maybe a Lotus Evora 400 has the edge on ride and steering, but beyond that, you have to look at really expensive cars. I mean, really expensive cars. You're looking up towards McLaren 650S and Ferrari 488 territory to get the kind of wheel control, body control, steering finesse from a mid-engined car. It is as close as you can get to the perfect sports car, and hey, it only costs 50 to 60,000 pounds which makes it all the more of a crying shame that it does not sound and respond as well as it used to. They put a sports exhaust on, it popped on the overrun. So what? I mean, just really tragic, really tragic. Even though the response is fine, and the fact is that a turbo makes it actually much easier to drive most of the time because you don't have to rev the absolute knackers off it in every gear to make progress and the oomph does make it more chassis adjustable. All of those things, yes, I understand them all, and it's 35 miles to the gallon. I don't care. I just really miss a flat six engine that revs to eight and a half thousand RPM. I just do. And no matter how good this is, I'm always gonna miss that, always.